That's for you, WWE. That's for you. You know what? You have your moments when you're awesome, and then most cases, you suck. But you know what? This whole Beast in the East network exclusive in Tokyo, Japan was a work of art. So kudos to you, WWE, for giving us, WWE fans, WWE Universe, something to be really, really proud of to be a wrestling fan. All right? You've, you've, you've dropped the ball so many times, especially as, as of late. And now you put your game face on and you give us something that is beyond pay-per-view worthy. This was such a good show. Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> you are listening, St Stitcher, SoundCloud, Tumblr. You're listening. And if you're on YouTube, you're watching and listening to Peter Talks beast in the east i'll be honest with you um i dj at night i you know drink a little i by the time i got home i was so fucking tired i just ate something and <laughs> and, and just called it a night i know a lot of you stayed up or either woke up at 5 30 to watch the beast of the east uh wwe network exclusive but not me i woke up I caught it. It's the 4th of July. I didn't want to miss uh, a lot of uh, today's festivities here in Greensboro. So, I, you know, I, I took a break, walked downtown, uh, looked at the pretty girls, and I came back and finished up the, uh, the, the, the show. And I tell you, man, that was something that I, would, I, I, I didn't expect. You talk about just a house show. You know, a house show in Tokyo that whoever brilliant idea it was to air on the network and to have something that we could see, that motherfucker better get a raise. The people that performed should get a raise. Everyone should get a raise. Like, this is what the WWE Network is definitely all about. You probably gain a lot of new subscriptions. For being able to show something like this. Um, something as exciting as watching it 5.30 in the morning. Again, I didn't. I would have. But I didn't. And it's fun. There was a lot of people tweeting online. You know, wrestling fans. In our own little way. We want to operate in ways that keep things interesting. And that's exactly what that was. If they do another one anytime soon. Yeah. You know, on a day that I can actually stay up and watch. Yeah, but... Nevertheless, who cares? I got to watch it, and now I'm giving you a review of this fucking amazing show. Um, yeah, so let, let's, just, let's just go into this. They're in Sumo Hall. Um, I can't even pronounce this. <laughs> I'm going to try this, all right? Watch this shit. Ryo Goku Kakugikan <laughs> Hall. <laughs> Oh, basically Sumo Hall, and it's in Tokyo, and this is just just WWE Live uh, overseas, and and they went to Tokyo, Japan for the first time, um, and they only had Byron Saxton and Michael Cole on commentary, which was refreshing just to have two voices. Saxton did all right; he did better than he does on SmackDown and Raw. Fuck, he finally came to play. I guess because he's just excited. And well, anyway, the two of them did a good job. And God, I mean, I can't say anything bad about this show. The, the, the Japanese crowd is interesting. You know, if you watch uh, New Japan, um, you realize that the wrestling fans are part of the show in a way that keeps the wrestlers interest i mean they it's not like they're in they're they're trying to what's the word go 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 to work go to work for themselves very much like say what happens in america where the crowd isn't it's more about them than the actual work in the ring 
And the Japanese fans are like, no, it's all about the work in the ring. And just the mannerisms, the way that they react to certain things, I mean, it's just like, it's theater to them. And they really get into it. And it makes me enjoy that much better. That's why I watch New Japan. Because of that. When I try to watch NXT or say when Raw or the pay-per-views go to like a bigger market and it's just, it's, it's just buffoonery, um, I just can't get into it. So the crowd at, in Japan made it that much more enjoyable. Like they bought in, they buy into people and who they are, like Kane, you know? The reaction that Kane got was that he was a big red machine, you know? Like they took him seriously as a big guy that once destroyed motherfuckers, you know? Even in Slacks, they didn't care. It's still fucking Kane and they reacted that way, which was fucking cool. But let's just go into the card. We get Jericho versus Neville. And I imagine this pissed a lot of people off um, again, you have to take in consideration that this is a house show. This isn't something that's tied into any storyline. This isn't anything that's tied in to nothing. It's a house show. And being that Neville is the young buck and Jericho is the veteran, a person that he even mentioned um, that before he came to the WWE or to, to WCW and to the WWE, he was actually a big, big part of Japan wrestling. Uh, Lionheart, they gave him the name Lionheart over there. All the lion stuff, the lion tamer, the uh, lion salt, the walls of Jericho, they all developed in Japan. So he's, a, he's as big of a star in Japan and legend in Japan than he is anywhere, say even Mexico or say even in the, even in the US. He ended up getting the win and I'm like, I bet people are like bitching and complaining how Neville um, probably didn't win. And it's just like, no, he's the veteran. He should win. It's still Chris fucking Jericho. I don't give a fuck. He could go up against anybody. He should win. He should win every fucking time. And when his music hit, I was like, oh shit, I forgot that he was actually on the card. And I forgot he was actually still with the WWE. And if you've been keeping up, he hasn't been on TV. He's just basically been doing the house shows. And, my God, the house show that came here, I wish the fucking God he would have came to this one in Greensboro. Fuck. Anyway, as soon as they walk in, you know, one sign, they cue this, like, welcome back home, Jericho. Um, the commentary acknowledged, and that blew me away, too. The fact that between Michael Cole and Byron Saxon, they were given an okay to actually bring up a lot of the w -I, uh, the IWGP stuff. Um, they even talk about, and this is a fucking pro Jericho crowd, by the way. Pro Jericho as hell. They, again, the guy's a legend there. And Neville also has his time um, in Japan as well. And they even brought up Dragon Gate. I bet, I bet a lot of people who were watching this were just floored by all the mentions of the connections of a lot of the WWE wrestlers to to Japan and its product over there. But they brought it, they brought up Dragon Gate. Um, dude, and the match itself, talking about the kick off a match, this was how you kick off a match. A veteran, a new guy, it, the walls of Jericho, it reversed to a hair Karana. That was pretty awesome. And then we got some from the crowd, which is very, very weird because I, I think it's the idea of Americanizing themselves for an American show. So you got like, this is awesome chance. Um, you get a, uh, a standing shooting star press from Neville. And then you get the lion salt from Chris Jericho that the crowd just fucking goes nuts over. You get a flying, basically, uh, Neville jumping off the top rope, uh, no, sorry, jumping off the top rope uh, into a flying code breaker, which was pretty cool. But Jericho gets the win with, after a counter of the red arrow into the walls of Jericho, a second walls of Jericho. Again, this match was not boring at all. Just constant, constant moving. And for me to be such a big Jericho fan, huge Jericho fan, it was 
cool to see him in action. Neville really did put up a good fight, even in a loss. It's just this Chris fucking Jericho. How many times do I have to say this? Um, I was going to be disappointed if Neville would have won, honestly. It's like, why, why, why? He's so young. Okay, he's going to have many opportunities to go back there and to, 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 to do his thing. So, yeah, give Jericho the victory. Um, well, anyway, great opening match. We then go to Paige versus Tamina versus Nikki Bella in a triple threat match. Yay! Um, and for the Divas Championship. Again, if you have, a, you have a world championship belt in a house show, you put it up. You always put it up. And um, Paige, oh yeah, like not Paige, but they even hashtagged Road to 300. Now, I'm not that big into um, this whole, I call him Hurricane Nikki, and the fact that her strong, her, her lock on the, um, the Divas division with the belt is holding up the joint. And there's not going to be much progress. Again, you have to look at this as a house show, but I'm just saying in general. It's holding up the progress of, say, what the Divas division or the women's division should be or can become. And I'm like, dude, it's all a wash. It's all a wash until she drops the belt. And I don't have much invested in, in the Divas uh, storyline until then. Um, and they even hashtag this son bitch, Road to 300. So we know what the deal is going to be for the next couple of pay-per-views until, like I say, like 60 more days until this shit is done. So this match itself starts off, and, and before, I don't know the impression of Japan and women's wrestling. You know, when you look at New Japan, they don't have any women workers, but there are Japanese women workers that exist, but do they ever get that? If you know of this, if, of, say Japan women wrestling and how they take it on um, leave a comment send me a tweet to PJTW Central um, and, and and show me something where Japanese women that wrestle get like a show or how they feel about like women wrestling in general so I was like is is this kind of weird say you know like if they went to like a Muslim state which they did not too long ago the Emirates and they didn't even let the divas go because the culture there doesn't allow women not only to show themselves, but let alone get in the ring and jump around. So I don't know if it's the same with uh, Japan. But, but this match starts off pretty fucking like, sloppy as fuck. Um, Tamina in the ring, since her, since her return, she's been giving up some bad fucking match. In it. And you can see it in this one where she's wrestling not to get hurt. You can see that she's trying either a she's still kind of like affected by her uh, i think it was a acl thing that she recovered from that she's still kind of moving favoring it and it's just i don't know why she's in the ring I, maybe that affected her wrestling career moving forward that she's going to wrestle scared and that's why she has such horrible matches since she's been back and i i really thought it would be different um there's a moment in the match where Paige and Nikki actually come together because Tamina's the big girl in the group, right? So at some point you got to take her out because she's the biggest threat. But there's a point where Paige and Nikki um, get a double suplex on Tamina. And then I guess, I don't know what it is about the Divas division when they come to the big matches um, that they have to do that spot where someone's, you have the uh, power bomb into the super uh, the superplex from the top rope spot and this happened in here anytime again anytime there's like some sort of three-way or triple threat or fatal full way they always have to get that spot in that is the designated spot for divas and i mean it looked good you had tamina doing the power bomb and you had um nikki bella um basically uh no, Paige getting Nikki Bella in the, su the superplex. Um, Nikki kicks out of the rampage. And I'm like, oh, God. Rubbing our face, why don't you? 
the fact that Nikki is kind of like super Cena. She's super Nikki right now, but she kicks out of the Rampage. The Rampage, if you don't know already, is like kind of like an inverted, like a kind of like armbar DDT that basically puts, wouldn't put any diva to rest. But for some reason, Nikki kicks out this fucker. And then she puts then the PTO, the page tap out on Nikki that gets broken up by Tamina. But Nikki wins after Tamina misses a, misses the big the big splash and hits her with the bull hammer, who which is now her new finisher. Thanks, uh, Barrett, for the for the move. She knocks out uh, Tamina, and Tamina gets pinned, um, and uh, Nikki retains. And then, again, it, again, the diva. It, this is a good match, regardless. It's house show. She, whatever, whatever. I just go. This divas division is again a wash until Hurricane Nikki blows over <laughs> the divas division. Just. Get out of there, just do your damage and get the fuck gone, and then I'll start caring about the Divas division once again. And then hopefully they start bringing up NXT girls, uh, Sasha Banks, um, and, and or Bailey, and or um, Becky Lynch, who's injured, should be back sometime soon, but, and um, Bailey. Like, that's, that definitely is the future of the, the, the Divas division, and, and Nikki with that belt, she's hot, she's a good representative, so on and so forth, but again it's taken away from the actual re you know women's wrestling action and that's all i say about that you get kofi kingston and this is i mean this is what the bill is i mean it's the beast in the east this this whole thing is surrounded by the fact that this is brock lesnar's first um match since wrestlemania and um and he's in japan and it, he wasn't supposed to do this actually i think it was just basically a write-off um, he was just in Japan doing business, and uh, the WWE just happened to be scheduled to be at it at the same time. So he's like, "Hey, put me on the bill. I'll fight. I'll fight Kofi. All right, just give me Kofi." And uh, this is what we get. They build it for this. I I honestly thought it was going to be the main event, or say uh, before the main event, but they put it on as the third, and um, it was what I expected it to be—a very short match. Um, Kofi Kingston. <laughs> comes out by himself without um new day and i i didn't think new day was there actually i was like oh well i guess new day isn't there i guess they're still in the states um we found out later that's not the case but um yeah he, he comes out and he's like <claps> and they're doing a new day sucks and kofi just gives this look i laugh my ass off kofi as a heel is great um I'm glad that he still has heat. I'm glad that the New Day still has heat, even though right now the WWE and their fucking way is killing their momentum. Um, actually taking it away, took the belts off them, um, and they've just been losing, 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 losing. But for some reason, they're keeping their heat, and I think the fucking WWE is pretty pissed off about that. They could do a better job. Maybe they thought that this would ultimately kill the heat um, by having basically Brock Lesnar destroy not only Kofi Kingston, but the rest of the New Day. But Kofi's awesome. Uh, Brock comes out. As soon as his music hit, it's like this feat. It's, it's a pop, but it's more like, oh, Godzilla's in the fucking building. Watch your fucking nugget. Um, I was hoping that he was going to come out in the Suplex City, <laughs> Japan. Um, but he didn't. He actually came out shirtless. And he didn't have Paul Heyman with him. Um, Cole mentions that he was once the IWGP uh, champion, a uh, heavyweight champion, and uh, which again took me back. It, it, it's it's pretty interesting that they felt comfortable. I wonder was that something that they discussed in the back to bring up uh, the Japanese ties and other promotions and shit. So for them to mention Dragon Gate, you know Jericho and him coming from. Japan and now the IWGP championship like kudos I mean it tells a story like sometimes the stubbornness of WWE creative and how things are talked about it's like it's a shame like like oh yeah ROH what's that oh yeah TNA what's that you know um but they bring up I, the IWGP shit which I'm just like thank thank you but the match itself it starts off and Kofi's wrestling and it's like, 
he's trying to get, he, you know, he shows his athletic ability. He gets put in a German suplex and he jumps out of it because he's a wily guy, you know, like this is why I kind of expect it for like maybe the first couple of seconds. And then he tries to get some licks in and no cell Brock is like, man, just kind of walking him off. He's like trying to punch, he's trying to kick, and like Brock is just walking. He's just walking, like just no cell Brock. And I guess he, he tires him out to a certain extent, and he hits him with one fucking German suplex. He hits him with two suplexes. He hits him with three suplexes. And being that Kofi is the heel, right? The Japanese crowd actually feels bad for him <laughs> because he's in the ring with Brock Lesnar, which is so fucking funny. We get like a double turn to a certain extent where it's like, oh, poor Kofi, you rock now. Like, you don't suck, you rock. Like, <laughs> fight, man. You're in there with, 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 with fucking Brock Lesnar. He's going to kill you. So we start getting Kofi chants, right? Like, pity Kofi chants, which is funny. And he get hits <laughs> with the F5. The end of Kofi Kingston. Like, you know, he's laid out. He's dead. He's no way. There's, there's, just, just hurry up and get whatever fucking, like, help in there. Um, and then, <laughs> Brock gets out of the ring. He comes back. Uh, and he hits him with another, he hits him with another German suplex. That makes four German suplexes. And he hits him with an F5. What you think about it, you know, this guy doesn't get paid by the hour. I think this match lasts at least four minutes, tops maybe. Um, but then Big E and Xavier Wood come out. I'm thinking they're not there. They come out and they all get hit with an F5 too. So all the brothers are all laid out in the ring. They're dead. They're all dead. R.I.P. Kofi and the New Day. They're dead. I hope they have a burial for them no pun intended, for them in Tokyo. Don't even worry about putting them on the plane and flying them back, all right? <laughs> and that was the Brock, that was the Beast of the East show. <laughs> Next up, we get, oh my God, an NXT match. Oh my God. Again, this is, talk about a big fight feel where you got the returning uh, Finn Balor wants Prince Devitt, which they bring up. Um, Tommy is in the crowd kind of watching because he was actually injured. He was supposed to be Hatan, uh, Adeo Tommy. He's supposed to have been actually in line to win the NXT belt, but he got injured. And that left it, left it open for Finn Balor to sort of step in and, and take that spot. But this is for the NXT Championship. And speculations of will Owen drop the belt to Finn Balor, with, you know, because he's going to be on the main roster from now on. He's not going to be with NXT. Is he going to drop the belt to Finn Balor? Is Finn Balor, right as NXT champ, finally starts in Tokyo, which is supposed to be a house show. Belts never change hands at a house show. But we, you know, this was, what's the word? This was Judgment Day. To see what this was going to happen. And my God. What a match. This is. And that's the thing about Kevin Owens. And you figure this out about Kevin Owens. When the when the stakes are higher. He just kicks out everything. On NXT it's just. He's just fucking doing chokeholds. And, and fucking uh, chin locks. That's it. Just ground and pound. But when it comes to like these bigger shows. Again. This was a house show. But ended up being a big deal. He. Brings out all the stops, and that's exactly what this match was. It was never a dull moment between. Okay. The 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 the, and Kevin heals it up. He heals it up beyond beyond just anyone who's ever been a heel before. Uh, whenever there's a championship match for the men, um, it's it's custom that they get flowers, right? Finn Balor, he's returning. Everyone's happy to see Prince Devitt again. They hand the fucking flowers to to uh, to Kevin Owens, and he tosses the motherfuckers. I mean, the heat that he gets. He's talking shit about Japan. Fuck this place. Yo, fuck y'all. I hate you. I hate its people. Uh, he's pissed off about the um, streamers in the ring too. He's like, get him out. 
get the fucking streamers out because when Finn finally came in and 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 with his new gimmick, people are just at awe. They're doing a uh, just a shit ton of te uh, uh, fucking uh, streamers just go into the ring, and it was something beautiful. Balor comes right out of the fucking gate and just goes at Kevin Owens, and it's like NXT chance. They even mention Prince Devitt, uh, the commentators, and 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 Owens and his accomplishments. Um, as the IWB, uh, IWGP champion, talks about all the other accomplishments he's ever done um, in the New Japan uh, promotion. Again, kudos. Owen just continues to heal it up to the point, and, and I think this is part of his repertoire now to do the five knuckle shuffle, to do the uh, ta the, the tackles, and then the, um, the you can't see me in the five knuckle shuffle. That happens. That happened actually on NXT in his match, um, his tag team match that he had against Finn Balor and um, who was the other person? I can't even think who the other fucking person was. But it was against... Uh, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> he did that in the last NXT taping. And I'm thinking that's just it's going to be his M.O., just to mock John Cena. And Owens does a, I don't know, it looks like he's about to do the muscle buster. Uh, at first it was just a package power driver, but now it's like more or less a power bomb. Like he gets him up and he drops him for the power bomb. Um, Owens kicks out of a coup de grace, the first one. Uh, a rolling senton off the second buckle uh, by Owens. That which was pretty fucking impressive. Um, reverse, uh, he does a reverse senton off the, uh, he reverses a senton off the top rope into a brain buster. Uh, and then the second coup de gras, uh, what, se yeah, second coup de gras after a reverse of the pup up power bomb. He jumps over him and then he just unleashes fury on, on, um, on uh, Kevin Owens, which results to the second coup de grace, and um, Finn wins. He gets the one, two, three, and becomes the new NXT champion. Again, man, this match goes long, but it's another dull moment. I mean, again, the action was top notch. It's good to see Finn Balor back in uh, Japan, and the crowd just loved it. Um, a big celebration at the end, even. Um, what the hell does he say? Uh, with Tatsumi Fajinu <laughs> Fujinami comes out to congratulate, who's also like a Japanese um, legend. He was inducted to the Hall of Fame. He comes out, shakes his hand. Um, and one thing about this that I noticed is that there was no replays of any moves during the match. They saved all the replays for the end of the match, which is like, I wish they did that shit more often. Um, for Raw, SmackDown, and even for pay-per-views because, dude, like, if this is something that Solomon even talks about in his podcast is that, like, oh, they get a headlock and then they have to show a replay of the headlock. No replays at all during this entire match. You just saw all the top spots going into, um, to the end. And at, after all the celebration, after all the, you know, stuff is taking, you know, the Fu Fujinami, um, and all the streamers are gone flying and everything is everything. And the belt is in Finn Balor's hands. There's a Owens and Balor face off. And uh, Balor basically wants to do the, he wants to shake the hand. He wants to do the code of honor. And then j just like the heel that Owens is, he fucking wipes off his, uh, he kind of just said, fuck your handshake and walks off now. I guess how does this people are like? Oh my God, it's gonna inter, it's gonna interfere with the idea of Cena, and we all know Cena is gonna. Um, I like the uh, when my predictions come up for Battleground. Cena will win, you know. Um, I want to do again. I keep promising how I want to do a video about how Kevin Owens is not the savior of the WWE right now. He's a WWE WWE employee, and he's going to as much as everyone's happy that he's there that he's going to be. Like some sort of some sort of revolutionary guy for that company, he's not. 
he's just going to be another guy. He's being fed to Cena. He's at the top. He just lost his belt to Finn Balor. And I understand he has to drop the belt, NXT belt. He didn't have to, but he had to. To basically be more incorporated with the main roster, WWE main roster. Um, and I see more future out of Finn Balor than I see Kevin Owens. And um, will this play into the idea that he lost to Finn Balor? Fair, that like clean, that like now he definitely doesn't deserve, doesn't stand a chance to get Cena. Maybe, maybe we'll get a good match anyway. But I'm not gonna sit back and go, well, how the fuck could he beat Cena now? He can't even beat Finn Balor. Well, Finn Balor is a fucking badass. <laughs> I mean, once you really think about it, he's a fucking badass. And he has the belt, he has the look, and I see him going to the main roster not anytime. I mean, I see him going to the roster real soon. And you know what? He's gonna be the guy. Um, that will carry the company after ev after everyone else. I mean, I see him carrying the company more than Roman Reigns. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, one one only sees what what happens later on, and then we get the main event, which is a tag team match, a tag team match. Between Dolph Ziggler with John Cena, uh, Kane, and King Barrett. Versus Kane and King Barrett. And before I talk about this match, uh, right now the talk of the wrestling world is Dolph Ziggler's contract running out in the WWE. And if you listen to previous uh, Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, I have brought up the idea that if I was to look at what Dolph Ziggler should do, I think he looks the part in, um, he looks, definitely looks the part for ROH, but he definitely also looks the part for like New Japan. But I'm thinking, you know what, just ride it out, go home, don't go to any other promotions, just heal up, just rest, you know. Just enjoy life for a little bit and then come back to the WWE. Don't, don't waste your time going to other um, promotions. But my God, seeing him in Japan around Japanese people, the, the way that that place absolutely loved him, I think we may found a new home <laughs> for a while uh, for, um, for Dolph Ziggler. He looked really natural out there. Uh, the crowd absolutely loved him. When his music hit, the crowd popped. He's very popular. He looks the part. I mean, he looks the part. And, and actually, if you were to go over everyone, now everyone loves John Cena, actually. There's a very pro-John Cena crowd. Um, I mean, he's larger than life. But man, oh man, did they love them some fucking Dolph Ziggler. So once his contract starts to run out, and it, you know, speculation, speculation goes back and forth. All I can go back to is this match and this being probably the more um, obvious. Well, what's the word I want to use? This is like, if there's any place that I can see him now, this would be the, the, the what's, what's the word? The uh, writing on the wall to the idea that maybe, just maybe Dolph Ziggler may just take his ass to Japan and, and do work over there. And I, the crowds, I don't know. It's just, just something to think about. This, this, uh, this is uh, foreshadowing. That's the word. This is foreshadowing to Dolph Ziggler's future. All right? So just, if you're watching and listening, just keep that in mind. Don't tell that. And it ain't like I said, I told you so. If he does make that jump. All right? But yeah, he he comes out first, and man, the crowd just pops. They love him. John, this is maybe the first, and when John Cena comes out, the place goes nuts. And like, this is probably the first, maybe the last time you ever hear John Cena come out to his music and not hear John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. I was listening, I was like, is someone, did it got at least a couple of marks in Japan that would actually do that? But nope, not at all. John Cena shirts everywhere. U.S. belts every fucking wear. Like, every fucking wear. Um, 
So super pro John Cena. But let's Americanize ourselves. Let's Westernize ourselves a little bit because we know, we know how this goes. And there's no John Cena match without Let's Go Cena, Cena Sucks, which happens as soon as a thing. And it's, it's funny um, how, um, it's funny to hear the crowd, especially when it, when, when, when they have to say Ziggler or anything that has R's and L's in it. So it's like, let's go Ziggler, Ziggler, uh, <laughs> Ziggler. Oh, either way, sorry, I, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just, I just thought it was cute because again, they're westernizing themselves a bit for these matches and these chants where the L's and R's are and you have, you know, you hear it, let's go Ziggler, you know, like they're, they're doing their best. And what I was mentioning earlier about Kane, Kane has respect in Japan. And he was considered a big guy in any and all the moves that he did. It was the Japanese people were at, at the gra like at every move, like him hitting or him kicking was like, ooh, who, who, the big bad Kane, you know? Um, and I bet he loved it. Cause in the States, we don't give a fuck. You I mean, we're just like so over him, you know, and we don't give a fuck if he fucking power bomb somebody, choke slam somebody, but like just a simple kick and the Japanese crowd reacted like like that. And <laughs> there's not a John Cena match where uh, you could catch him calling spots and that happens even in fucking Japan. I'm just like, God damn it. But the match itself is really good. I mean... For what it's worth, it was a good match. It was a good match. Um, not great, but good. What made this match that much good was the reaction from the Japanese crowd. And, you know, Ziggler getting the baby face beat down at some point and you get the, you know, let's go Ziggler chance, which results to John Cena getting the hot tag where everything really gets interesting. You look at the team of Ziggler and Cena, and I go, man, they could be a tag team. The chemistry between those two is really good. Barrett, you know, I think Barrett doesn't, he's healing it up. He doesn't get as much of a reaction. He's kind of like the odd man out, which is sad. I mean, I could see him in Japan. I can see, but I think the WWE just did a great job of making him insignificant so that really boils over to him being in japan um but yeah you get the hot tag to cena you get the five knuckle shuffle you get the whole you know five moves of doom but you also get super kicks by um by dolph ziggler in that melee at the very end but barrett gets pinned after a super kick um from ziggler into the aa and John Cena gets the pin on um, on King Barrett. Another another loss, another pin for King Barrett. I mean, he had so much momentum fighting after beating fucking Jack Swagger and and, and Zack Ryder. You know, his momentum has been crushed. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But that basically ends the Beast in the East um, house show WWE Network exclusive. I mean, it was fucking fantastic. And we we as fans are going to go into Raw with such high expectations. Now, again, it's not supposed to tie any storylines together. I think the only storyline that should be tied together is the NXT match. Because, okay, it was for the belt. And it was an exchange of belts. So the NXT storyline definitely goes into effect. And... And the storyline with John Cena. But that's it. That's really what this should... When you walk away from this, the only thing that carries over is that, okay? Because even Ziggler... I mean, Lana's not out there. We didn't get Paul Hammond out there. Um, the New Day were there, but they didn't come out with Kofi Kingston. You know, this is just a house show. You got to keep that in perspective. But again, the NXT storyline advances and... Maybe, just maybe, the John Cena versus Kevin Owens stories advances because he doesn't have the NXT belt now. We'll see how that plays out. But everything else, it's just a house show. 
It was a great house show. They should show more of the goddamn house shows on the network. Just, you know, if they go to a city and maybe there's a special attraction, just show it because it's a whole different show. It's just a whole different show. And we're going to go into Raw with all these fucking high expectations, right? Thinking like, man, that fucking Japan show was awesome. I got all these expectations for this fucking Raw. And you know what? We'll probably end up with a shitty Raw after this. It's not even a fucking pay-per-view. I want to see Jericho, right? I want to see Finn Balor on the main roster, you know? I want to see long matches. You know, not long matches. I want to see, like, really gritty matches that would just keep you on the edge of your seat. I, I don't need a saturation of storylines and dumb fucking the authority. I don't want to see fucking the authority show no more, you know? I don't want to see that shit no more. I don't want to see 15-minute openers of Seth Rollins, his new substance having ass, just doing the same thing. I don't want to see Kane in every fucking main event. I don't want to see fucking Ambrose get so much heat or even Ziggler so much, you know, uh, such a good pops and people behind him only just to see them lose over and over. I don't want to see that. I want to see just decent storylines, not over the, t just stay, just keep it in the ring, keep us interesting interested in the work at hand. How hard is it, fucking WWE? This came off great because there's no storyline attached. So we got to see great action. Now Monday we gotta get the same fucking song and dance and we're just gonna be pissed off, dozing off to the same bullshit. Okay, Brock Lesnar's gonna be in Chicago. They go back to Chicago. Great. And what they're gonna do? They gotta follow up a post beatdown of his ass by Kane, Seth Rollins, and J&J &J security. Fucking pathetic. Really? That is what's supposed to happen to Brock Lesnar. We just seen him kill three black men. <laughs> he fucking kills three black men, and now he's gonna have to fucking go to a storyline that he is overwhelmed by two midgets, a fucking guy in slacks, and this Dude with the belt with no substance. Stupid. It's, it's just stupid. And we got to go back to Dolph Ziggler and his dumbass story. I mean, it's getting interesting with Lana, but like, schoolboy giggly. <laughs> we got to go see that shit after this fucking performance. You know? I digress. I'm just saying, it just sucks when we get such good product. And then the follow-up is like just dumbass storylines and the WWE wanting things their way, regardless of how we feel about the talent, regardless of how we feel about how we want to see things move forward. Um, and it's just, it's, it, it's just, it's fucked up <laughs> is what it is, man. But I digress and I want to thank you so much for watching and listening to Peter Talks Beast in the East. Again, you can find me on Twitter under two things. L in Japanese, that's, <laughs> speaking of Japanese, but L in Japanese. <laughs> L-I-N-J-A-P-A-N-E-S-E. -E. That's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's SoundCloud, that's Snapchat. And my other Twitter account, where I do mostly, I mean, ultimately wrestling, uh, tweets. The Ellen Japanese tweets are like, you know, sports, you know, Pacers and, and, and Philadelphia Union type stuff and then like how I'm feeling. But PJTW Central is my wrestling account, which is PJTWCentral.com. I'm going to redo the website, but you go there and you can click and go to the archives of Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, Fast in the World Podcast, which is now on SoundCloud backslash JG Pro Wrestling, um, Peter Talks Smackdown, uh, Peter Talks Wrestling with the New Day Podcast, which is me and Nathan Newman. We haven't done one in a while. We'll be back soon. Um, and Peter Specials, interviews. Of This will be a P uh, Peter Talks special because, again, it's a special event. Why not? And... Um, yeah, just if if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. 
If you're listening on SoundCloud, Stitcher, uh, thumbs up, like, share, comment, man. Add me, follow me, I will follow you back. Ask me a question or something, man. I mean, I get, um, one year is upon me just doing these podcasts. The, 50, the 52nd um, episode of Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling with Jake Grandi um, will be SummerSlam. The SummerSlam review. And we're going to go, um, the audio that we will be video. And I'm going to change up a lot of things. Um, so keep, stay tuned. I got some awesome stuff. I just want to give myself a year to get better at this. And then when we get to that year mark, there's going to be a lot of changes. Especially, mostly with, with YouTube and you guys seeing us. Um, and being able to build a bit of a fan base. Maybe get some sponsorships and this, that, and the other. But I just want to make sure that my craft is good before... Um, we give you good stuff, better website, better content, um, just that and the other. Uh, so, again, thank you. Again, do all those things I said. Share, 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 share. If you like this, share, 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 share. And um, enjoy the rest of your 4th of, Jul 4th of July holiday weekend. I'm Peter. Peace.